Good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, a visit I had today to Homeboy Industries and in particular I want to talk about the F word. It is Friday so I'll use the F word today. But before I jump in and explain what I mean and talk about that in more detail and give you the framing of this, I should introduce myself first so you know who I am and what I'm doing. My name is Barry Selby. Hi, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. I'm an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, spiritual teacher. I'm adding that in now because it's becoming more prevalent. Also, the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. It's a good book. I recommend it highly since I wrote it. And I'm also, a, uh, as I said, a love and relationship coach, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I'm also very devoted to spiritual practice and learning and teaching. And that sort of is now what's combined to, launch, to talk about these talks I've done now for almost three years now, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And lately they've got a new title added onto them, which is Living Life Through a Spiritual Lens. And so I'm gonna to speak to that now, and I'll probably tie into relationships, because it always seems to. And so today we're episode number 855. Yes, I've done a bunch of these, and I'll tell you about where you can watch the replays at the back end of the broadcast. So stay tuned for that. And so let me explain what I'm talking about today. So what I'm speaking to is, thank, well, first of all, thanks to Marcy um, for putting this together. Thanks to Miriam, sorry, Marion, excuse me, and Kelly for being my carpool uh, riders. As we went downtown LA today to go to visit Homeboy Industries, and we got to do a tour and talk to some of the people there. And one of the things that was really wonderful, surprising at first, wonderful and profound as well, was the, the um, staff member, I guess his staff member, who volunteered to give us the tour. And I'm going to get to the F word, so hold on, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, I'll leave his name out just to be polite, because I don't know if I want to respect, respect that, even though he was a wonderful guide and teacher. Um, 29 years old, and basically ex-gang member, ex sorts of stuff that he's coming out of. But he was sharing some stuff about his own journey. And I've been on this journey myself for a long time, and I haven't had anything like the journey he's been on. But what he shared just hit me hard because it reminded me of the power of the F word, which I'm getting to, and you probably can guess where I'm going with this, but I'll speak to it in a moment, is that, um, hi Brooke, nice to see you in my broadcast. Excuse me, Brooke Sidney, let me completely complete your full name. Um, in this, should I do that? There we go. This is a thing I've discovered you can do, you can wave at people, it's a strange feature of Facebook Live. Oh, by the way, this is Facebook Live. <laughs> So if you're watching me live at 5 p.m. on my personal page, and I'll tell you about the links at the back end again. You can comment live in the broadcast. If you're watching the replay, you can do the same thing too, wherever you're watching. If it's on YouTube, I will do my best to repeat any comments people post, so that way you know who, what I'm responding to. Okay, back to the talk. So um, this particular gentleman who was talking to us, again, 29 years old, shared about his journey. And also the biggest thing he kept, that I kept taking away from this was, he said all the time that he was because he was basically um, with Homeboy Industries. And he, actually, let me, let me back up a second. If you don't know what Homeboy Industries is, it is a, um, how do I describe it best? It's a place, <laughs> downtown LA, started by Father Boyle, who's a um, Catholic, Catholic, I believe, uh, minister in the early 90s, I believe it was, I think 90, I have to look back at the information. But anyway, he started it basically to um, create peace between different cultures in South Central and other parts of LA that were gang members, ex-gang members. So there were Crips and the Bloods back then, and he basically helped a lot of them find peace and find um, respect between them. And it wasn't an easy task. It took him many, many years. And so this is now 2019, and I'd heard him, I heard Father Boyle talk about two, you know, it was August, two months ago. So this... Um, a chance to explore and tour the facility it was a great chance to do check out the work he's been doing. So anyway, so this young gentleman was talking to us about his journey, and he said the one thing's about Homeboy Industries that he loved, that he actually was, um, were, and well, he didn't love it initially, but he was surprised by it, was they never um, either fo forced him to stay or forced him to leave. And they made it clear that what they were doing with him was creating a safe space for him by being very... Um, allowing whatever happened. So when he left to go do other things, they didn't have any questions. When he came back, they didn't have any questions. It's like he found himself growing through the experience of not being judged, labeled, questioned, interrogated, or any of that sort of stuff. He got accepted. 
And the thing that was out of that, which I took from it, he didn't say this word, the F word, but I take it to heart in what he was talking about was, because he said the biggest thing he learned was it wasn't about the other people. And this is the thing that I want to teach you. It's a powerful piece, and this piece I hope you get. I did talk yes, uh, yesterday about stop playing the victim. This is part of that, another part of the layer, or the layers of this, is he said that when he had that, he was running all these beliefs and rules, he said he kept realizing that everything that was happening in his head wasn't what's happening out there. Everything that he experienced about doubting or worrying or not concerned wasn't coming from the outside, it was coming from inside. And so he really started to get was, it was how he interacted that made the difference. He said that he was in a, um, he, he was basically, because he, he has other people, um, he shadows other people when they're doing their tours too, to show people how to do it. And he also got a chance to work with this younger gentleman from an opposing gang. And he said he was surprised to notice for himself how he didn't like go into immediate hate and resentment and judgment about the other person, which was a big step. But what he did say was, is when this other young guy shared, he realized, and I think they were in a class together where they came up. Again, I'm, I may be muddling my details, but I want to get the essence of this. He said when he saw the other young guy share, he started hearing his own story. He started hearing how this other uh, young man was concerned about his kids, about raising a family, about having a wife, about the things that he was going through himself. And so he, he said he didn't learn to love this person, but he learned to respect this person. And that's the thing that was a key piece, by the way. The F word I'm hinting at, and you probably guess what I'm talking about by now, is the word forgiveness. It's actually the SF word in my language, because it's about self-forgiveness. And this is the thing that he got and he explained in this talk, was about how it really was about himself. He didn't have to get anything from anybody else to make anything fixed for anything else. It was about him in relation to himself that changed everything around him. So forgiveness, I've talked about before in broadcast more than once over the last two or three years. And I teach it in my work and I do work, work with my clients on it. And I also have a couple of um, worksheets you can download, which I'll, put the, I'll let you know you can reach out to those if you want them at the back in the broadcast after explain what I mean. So there's a book by Colin Tipping called Radical Forgiveness. His second book is called Radical Self-Forgiveness. Now, frankly, I think he made a, a deal by having two books out that were very similar. But I think what also happened is he realized that the power of forgiveness was the internal process of forgiveness, nothing to do with anybody else, which is why he wrote the second book, The Power of Self-Forgiveness. Um, sorry, The Radical Power of Self-Forgiveness. It's also The Radical Power of Forgiveness. Yeah, just making sure I remember the title right. So, what's that going to do with anything? What it means is that forgiveness is nothing to do with you giving anybody else power. Again, I talked yesterday about stop being the victim, giving your power away. Forgiveness is another resource, another tool, another place to come back to yourself and take your power back. Now, let me shift gears from homeboy industries to your past relationships. Oh, we're gonna have some fun here. <laughs> Maybe. I took... Um, when was this talk? I was having a talk with somebody a couple of days ago about the whole um, resentment issue in relationships. Well, let me, let me recap the cliff notes here. If you're like most people, and, I, and I'm, I'm part of that most people because I've done it myself, you may have carried judgments about your past relationships. Perhaps you were resentful about how your partner treated you or how your partner didn't treat you or how you treated them. Actually, that'd be guilt, not resentment. Resentment's about the other person. Guilt is the inverse, by the way, of resentment, or the opposite, not the opposite, but it's the internal part of resentment. Resentment's externally focused, guilt's internally focused, but they're the same basic thing, just so you know. If you've been in relationships where you had this challenge where your partner hurt, abused, wounded, even hated you, you may feel a desire or may feel that it's right to be resentful of them, to judge them, to hate their guts because of what they did to you. And I can appreciate you feeling that way. However, this is the thing I talked about yesterday and I want to remind you again about this too. Because these are aspects, these are flavors of codependency, which I talked about before as well. By carrying that hate inside yourself, you're giving power to the other person. Yes, you're giving a power to the other person. I'm going to say that again so you get the point. When you carry the hate and wounding inside yourself, you're giving a power to the other person. Now, does it seem backwards somehow? Because if you were actually upset with the other person the way they treated you, Giving a power to them wouldn't be what you want to do, is it? No. Forgiveness is about turning that um, conduit off. It's cutting the cord, so to speak. 
let me give you a couple of the, these are these are simple analogies but resentment is one of these things that we do a lot in our lives it could be anything as simple as resenting somebody because they hurt you personally it could be resenting somebody who is doing something that you're not you don't like it could be some it could be resenting somebody who's affecting your lifestyle somehow because as a, an employer or a police officer or a government official or something else you may be resenting them all of those things have nothing to do with them again i'll say that again all of those all of, oh, your resentment sorry all those things that upset you have nothing to do with them this is all about you oh goody resentment has been quoted i want to quote i use a lot of times is resentment is taking poison expecting the other person to die i said that again so it lands Rese i guess i'm repeating myself a lot today resentment is taking poison expecting the other person to die so if you're upset with your ex-boyfriend -boy ex ex-girlfriend ex-partner for the things they did to you can resentment doesn't affect them at all they may be moved on to another they may be able to marriage new family whatever's going on for them now if you take joy in their sadness don't do that that's the same thing as resentment it's a revengeful feeling it doesn't work it may give you pleasure in the short term but it's going to hurt you in the long term see the thing i want to say is that resentment again being about you not them because you're taking poison toxic to in making a system toxic rather than the other person isn't making you better or making them worse in fact, if anything it's making you worse and that's not healthy so forgiveness is one of the most powerful profound and elegant tools i know to one let yourself off the hook and two provide you with freedom from entrapment actually sorry enmeshment is a better word entrapment means something else legally enmeshment and victimization because i talked about yesterday about again yes this talk was about being a victim when you understand the power of forgiveness that you can have in your very hands the tool of forgiveness you start to realize how much more freedom you'll have in your life um to reflect on the talk i don't know if i may, I may have mentioned it yesterday i can't remember i said it i'm going to say it again anyway so i may have said it yesterday if i did excuse me if you haven't watched the broadcast you won't care um barbara angelis talked about it's bugging me now I've got to, i'll remember where it comes from it'll come to me at some point anyway <laughs> Barbara Angelis was speaking about a year or two ago, I saw her speak when she was at Agape, and she said something in one of her talks about relationships, because he's a relationship expert as well. And she talks about how, if you imagine that our ability to love and express love is like the ocean in front of us, waves and depth of water and an amazing amount of flow and grace and ease. When we have a bad breakup and we hold resentment against the other person, when we feel abused, hurt, wounded by the other person, we carry that judgment and that upset inside ourselves, it's like we're putting sheets of ice on top of the water. And when you, when you put the ice on top of the water, what you're doing is creating an inability for that water to flow. So the more ice that's on top of the water, it's like an ice sheet, like, like the Antarctic, for example. Um, it's creating an inability for the ocean to flow, meaning that the more chunks of ice you put on the water, the more upset wounds and hurt feelings you have for your past relationships that you put out there, they block off your ability to love. Again, the more flow you have in the ocean in front of you, the more love there is to express. And the more blocks you have on top of that, the less room there is to express that love. Meaning that the more you don't release your judgments and wounds inside that you hold on to if you're past relationships, the less love you're going to be able to give in your next relationship. Which is unfair to you, unfair to your new partner. So listen up. Forgiveness is your freedom key. It's your tool to give you the freedom you deserve, desire and need so you can love again more freely. Isn't that what you want? So, make sure I covered all the points I want to cover. So, forgiveness, what it does, again, it's not about the other person. Most people have this, many because it's, I think it's in the Catholic faith and it's in most love stories about, you know, you've got to forgive them to let them off the hook. No. You forgive yourself to let yourself off the hook. Because judgment against the other person puts you on the hook. Again, you limit yourself, you, you shut down, you close off your ability to love by judging and resenting other people. Now, the thing about forgiveness is it's not about forgetting. This is the big one, by the way. Some of you think, well, if I, give, if I forgive them, then, the, then that means they get away with it. No. They're getting away with it anyway, even if you're judgments. The thing about forgiveness is it gives you a place to come back to center so that you no longer feel a victim to what they did or didn't do. Again, this is about victimization. And it's self-inflicted victimization by carrying judgments, resentment, and hurt feelings about something somebody else did. This is a spiritual teaching, so I'm calling this under the spiritual lens I'm talking about. This is, by the way, this is my third 
series to talk about this. I've got two more lined up already, I can feel them. So I wanna make sure you get this as a teaching that you can use in your life anywhere, not just in relationship, but it does apply in your relationships too. The ability to forgive only requires, only requires the willingness to let go and the willingness to have compassion for yourself. If you have those two ingredients, willingness to let go and ability to be compassionate with yourself, then freedom is e then, then forgiveness is an easy tool to use. If you can't do those two, forgiveness won't work. Just to be simple, forgiveness is not a mechanical mental process. If you say, you know, I forgive myself, I'll give you the framework basically, but in the self-forgiveness work, when you say, I forgive myself for judging so-and-so for what they did, but really you're going, I still hate them, that's not gonna work. So you've gotta first of all have compassion for yourself and you'll be willing to let go of what happened. Now, again, forgiveness is not about forgetting. So if you're in a bad breakup, bad relationship, or you were somebody you hate, I mean, challenge you with even now, and you have judgment against them, the forgiveness is not to say, erase it, forget what happened, and go back to the same situation. No. What it does, though, it gives you the ability to see with less, um, I was gonna say less anger and rage as part of it, but less, um, strings being given to them to control your feelings when you forgive yourself and this is one of the best it's like they say success is the best revenge in a way it is because when you learn to forgive yourself about past breakups your freedom is your revenge against them not doing it against them but when you start realizing you're free you don't care what happens and they may or may not notice which is the thing you don't care anymore you moved on but you're free moving on so you actually remove all the ice from the ocean so you can love fully and embrace again a new relationship but you've got to be willing to do the work to forgive yourself, to learn how to heal and to make peace for those judgments about what happened in the past. And some of these judgments go back a long way, I know. Some go back to family, some go back to parents, some go back to your father, your mother, two past relationships, your, your adolescent boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it was. This tool has no time limit on it. It also has no time basis. It can forgive anything at any time. So if you've got judgments from when you were three years old, you can forgive those too. But you've got to be willing to let go and to have compassion for yourself first, and then you can have the forgiveness. It is a powerful tool, and it's a, vi it's a vital piece of the toolkit that I provide for my clients, but also that you need for yourself. Um, as I said, I'll put a link in the comments so you can reach out to me for those forms. I'll send you the two worksheets. One is, my, one is the, one is the forg uh, Radical Forgiveness Worksheet from Colin Tipping's book. You can get it from his website too, but I'll give you, I'll send the email to you with the link, the PDF attached. And the second one is my own um, distillation of what I learned from my master's program at University of Santa Monica. So it's a forgiveness booklet, not just a worksheet, it's a booklet on how to do it. But it's a self-forgiveness path that puts you in a place where you can let go of your own constriction and your own self-recrimination so you stop beating yourself up. And let me say this, if you're judging somebody else, resenting somebody else for what they did, you're actually beating yourself up and that isn't healthy and I'm sure you don't want to do it once you become aware of it. I think I made my point clear. So this is, this is just some of the things I got from uh, being at uh, Homeboy Industries today. So um, again, I'll put some links in the comments so you can find out more about what I can do for you and also I'll put links I've mentioned in the broadcast. So I'll put a link in there for my books that I mentioned at the beginning, of course, because I promote my book, my book. I'll put a link in the comments for the self-forgiveness worksheets um, and I'll, basically what I'll do is I'll put a contact form in there so you can reach out to me for support either for general guidance or for the worksheets that I can provide. Just put in the comments what you want, what you want from me and I'll send them back to you. Um, third, if you're a woman who's in the middle of a bad place between relationships or you're not sure where you're gonna go next or you don't wanna attract the same relationship again and again, I'll put a link in the comments for a, um, a chat with me and then we can talk over that. Um, and that's the three. Is there anything else? I think that's it. So yes, yeah, so those three things. So. So I'll give you the verbal links so you can have them as well. So again, if you want the worksheets for the self-forgiveness or you want to reach out to get some deeper coaching around the spiritual perspective I'm offering now, um, you go to barryselber.com forward slash contact. Hi, Brian, I see my broadcast. Um, secondly, my book is barryselber.com forward slash book. And thirdly, uh, if you want to get a chat about your next steps about relationship and love, you go to barryselber.com forward slash chat. I'll put the comments physically in the, I'll put the links in the comments Right around after I sign off, so you'll have those. Um, and that's it. Replays. Oh, before I get to replays, um, today would have would have been my parents' 66th wedding anniversary. So props to my parents. I posted a picture early on today. My brother posted it last night because he's in Europe, so he got to do it before I did. 
Um, so this is my parents, would have been my parents' 60th, 66th anniversary. My mother passed away in 2012, but that's still going at 93 now. So um, just holding them both in love and peace. So that was just, I'm gonna give that out. So replays. So this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here. You can join me anytime you want and join live and participate. If you're catching this in the replay because you watched it after that time, feel free to add comments, questions, I can respond when I sign off. Um, also, I save my replays to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. So please like my page on, on Facebook. Also, for some reason, it looks like Facebook isn't saving all of them, just the last three or 400. Yeah, I know, three or 400 is quite a lot. But I've got 850 of these. So I do have them saved to my computer. Thankfully, I learned that lesson early on. And they're also on my, I've now put them onto my YouTube channel. So if you can watch any one of my broadcasts from the first one to the last one, all that's 855, including this one. If you go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, or just look for my name on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel and find the playlist called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all of these broadcasts. Um, okay, give me all that. So replays, links, tributes, forgiveness. You've got a good full package today. So. If you have any questions, you can message me over social media or put questions below and respond when I sign off. This is a big piece. If you get this piece and understand how to use it, it was in my two year program, master's program, so it took me a bit longer than one session to do it. But self-forgiveness is really the key to freedom. So that's my third talk about the um, living life through a spiritual lens. I've got two more coming up tomorrow and Sunday I already know about. Um, maybe more of that, we'll see. But this is definitely where my focus is moving toward to take you from relationship to a higher level. So if this is making sense to you, I appreciate it. Feel free to let me know what you think. And again, a reminder is always put yourself first in your life. Take care of yourself. You deserve it. You're worthy. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, that's it. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.